All right, guys, how you doing? It's Rubia. I hope you're all good. So I got up this morning. This is a true story. I got up this morning and I had a great idea for a new series of videos for my YouTube channel um, called High Gain Harmony. We all know that I like to use stereo amp rigs, dual amp rigs, and just like to blend different amps and channels together all the time. I do it in my own time and do it on recording, do it live. But I never really figured that it would be something fun to do in the studio for YouTube and for you guys. Um, so the idea and the premise behind the video to start off with is to go through my amp rack that I've got because it's filled with high gain beasts and I wanted to see which one of the, which ones of those blend well together and we can discuss it in the comments section. You guys can suggest which ones you want to hear. We can see if I can get hold of different amps from different manufacturers and blend them with some of these. Um, so yeah, I just figured it was a cool way of getting some playing in, uh, showing you guys cool ideas between different tones and how you can blend them together to create different kind of sounds ultimately. Uh, and just essentially just a load of fun really. So, High Gain Harmony episode one. I figured for this episode, it'd be really cool to try out the JVM 410, which is one of my favorite amps that I've had for years and years, and pair it up with the 5150 Mark I. Now, I know I've spoke about this pairing before in a video called Revisiting Old Friends, and it's also responsible for why we have the VX100 uh, as an amplifier in the market today. This is, a, this is a combination of amps that I've used a lot over the years, but do these amps actually pair well together? Let's find out in this video and we can discuss it in the comment section below, but let's crack on. So before we get started, I need to tell you about my teething issues here because hopefully someone will be able to help me. I've got the four load boxes in my studio. I've got the Ox box, I've got the Sur Reactive IR load box, I've got the Torpedo Studio, and I've got the Wazza Tube Amp Expander. Now I was hoping to use the Sur IAct, uh, Reactive IR and the Tube Amp Expander because for me they matched really well together when I tried. However, when I hooked it up today, no matter how hard I tried, I was getting a ridiculous amount of whistling and ground hum and just feedback and horrible sounds. It was out of phase, I could not work out why. And I still can't work out why. I tried the same powering, two different powerings, line isolator, my Layla P-Split line isolator, just, you know, and I set it up exactly the same way I always do, but for some reason, there is an issue. So I've spent the most of this morning before shooting this video, trying to find the best combination just to allow me to play a dual amp rig in the studio. Um, so, the rig we've got going on today is the JVM is going into the Two Notes Torpedo Studio, and the 5150 is going into the Boss Wazza Tube Amp Expander. All the IR simulation is turned off on both load boxes. They're both running into Logic with an instance of Archetype Nolly from Neural DSP for the cab section and for the effects section. That way, I can essentially make sure it all sounds good and then deal with it after the fact. It's also worth letting you guys know that in terms of cabs that I use with the Archetype Nolly, I use the white cab, which is for the crunchy kind of amp for the JVM, and then I use the black cab, which is used for the the 5150 in Archetype Nolly for the 5150 because I figured that they were voiced for those kind of amps, you know. I know that the white cab was more of a kind of British sounding voicing for those kind of amps and so on and so forth. I just think they probably blend better than having two identical sounding cabs. Next thing to do is just talk real quickly about the tones that I've got dialed in. Obviously this is high gain harmony so we're dealing with high gain tones but where necessary we will dial it back a little bit. In this case I'm just showing you the high gain tones. So we've got OD1, orange stage, which is the best stage of the JVM. We're running the second channel of the 5150, the high gain channel, because they pair really well together in my opinion. In any case, let's start out by showing you the JVM. So you can tell it sounds pretty aggressive. This is the 5150. 
So you can hear that's clearly the 5150, not quite as defined. There's a lot more girth to it and low end. Uh, but here's the magic sauce when you blend the two together. Apologies for a little bit of ground hum. Uh, as I said before, I've had a bit of teething issues this morning trying to set this up, but I'm hopefully going to get it sorted. But either way, um, what I like about the JVM here is that it gives you the articulation in the tone. Even though there's a lot of gain, you get a nice amount of articulation there. You can hear, you can really hear the uh, articulation and the string definition between the low and the high strings, which I really like. And then the 5150, high gain again, but it's just thicker, chewier, it's that American Voice 6L6 thing. It's really like intense, but less articulate. Like it's punchier, but it doesn't have quite as much definition over the top notes compared to this. You can clearly hear the difference. But together, you get the best of both. So it sounds good to me. It's it's the kind of high gain tone that I like, full fat. But I know a lot of people like to use tube screamers in front and for good reason, because they just add more aggression. Usually you turn the drive all the way down, you push the volume of the tube screamer just above halfway and you ride the tone depending on where you like it. That's exactly what I've done here. Um, so let me just chug without it and let me turn it on real quick. Should we just hear what it does to each individual amp first? So this is the JVM without the max on. with the max on. And then the 5150 without it. And with it. You can quite clearly hear the gain boost and the serious, like, gnarly mid-range. So, this is both without. Here it comes. Well, there's no doubt that adding the tube screamer just gives you that really, like when you palm mute and it does the growly thing that all the genty guys like to talk about. It definitely has that, it definitely has that. For me, whenever I put a tube screamer on in front of a high gain amplifier, it's too much, it's more, it's out of control for me, which is why a lot of people use these gates as well so that you can control it, but I just prefer it without. I mean, it sounds good, but I prefer it without. So this is it with. And this is it without. Let's start with the B, the fat B. It's a lot. It sounds really good, but it's a lot. 
Okay, next up, let's try some lead. So I've loaded up a little bit of reverb and delay on both archetypes um, either side so that we've got a nice bit of... Uh... So there you go. Let's try out the leads. Definitely surprised that I'm not getting tons of noise from the from the rig. I don't know what that would sound like live for a cab. And I think it's also worth pointing out that because I can hear the tubes doing their thing in their amps there, it's almost giving this extra layer of fizz on top. Um, so it'll be interesting to listen to this back. But like, what do you think at this point? Write in the comment section. See, I think without the tube screamer, it's got more girth. Let's go for the fat B. The fat B on full in front of anything just does it for me. So next on the test of things to test, even though this is high gain harmony, let's see how well it rolls off, you know? So I've got a coil split sound going on middle position, roll off the volume a little bit. Let's see what kind of articulate cleaner tones we can get. So yeah, oh, let me resolve. Yeah, I think it reminds me of when I started Tosca because I use these two for Tosca and although it does a great job and you have to have the right kind of pickup set to do it, 
Otherwise, see the thing with the war pig that I used is it was very compressed, so it held a lot of the frequency, like the low end stuff, so I could roll off and get that response. Whereas this, sounding a bit thin, and it's tuned higher, of course. The other thing to point out is that it really depends on what amps you're using, whether you can roll off, because depending on the way the amp circuit's designed and the compression and the response in it all, when you roll off, some amps retain that kind of harmonic response that you'll hear, whereas other ones tend to just drop off. And I'd found that these two work quite well together, but only when I'm using channel two on the 5150 with the, with the overdrive on JVM. So now if I try my original blend, which was the crunch channel of the 5150, with the bright switch in, crunch dialed up to seven, although it's an awesome tone, so check this out. Oh, it's just great. Sorry, I was getting carried away. I was supposed to be showing you the difference. So now that we've got the crunch and the OD one, it's great full bore. But now if I try to roll off and do the same thing again, see if you can hear an imbalance between the two. not necessarily that it's a volume difference but because the gain staging is different between the JVM and the 5150 what you start to notice is that there's way more like harmonic content happening on the JVM side like you get the support from the 5150 but there's nowhere near enough de definition therefore it's perceivably favoring the JVM side in my, to my ear uh, but let's move on let's try it with the baritone Okay, so hopefully you can hear what I love about this rig. Doesn't matter what level of gain you seem to play at, you just feel like it's supportive and you get the thickness and the definition from both amplifiers. And with the reverb and delay and a baritone, it sounds absolutely colossal. I just love that. Fat B. This is the part where we work out which we think is the best in terms of the tones of the amps, of course. Let's just hear the JVM on its own. We know that sounds good. Now this is the 5150 crunch on its own. You can hear there's just no definition, which is why together, So if you put a tube screamer on that, let's go back to the 5150 alone. Uh, Max on. You're getting a bit more articulation, so does it work like this? 
let's swap back over to the overdrive channel of the 5150. You hear that definition there. Now with the tube screamer on. Now both together. So immediately way less low end, that's tighter and the mid range is pronounced, which suggests that it's much better for the Jean. So, I think you also need a seven string to really get the sound of that genty thing, because it just never sounds right with the baritone. I'm not saying that it sounds wrong, it just doesn't get you that extra genty, girthy, barky thing with this kind of rig. However, I'm not a gent player. Um, <laughs> I mimic what I think sounds a bit like gent, and try my best. But anyway, so that would be the end of the first episode of High Gain Harmony. Now, I want to refine this and get it better and better and stuff like that, but ultimately the principle is find two amps, blend them together, do they work? So in this instance, we have the Marshall JVM 410 and the PV5150 Mark I. Not a block letter, unfortunately, but it is PV5150 Mark I. Do I think the JVM and the 5150 blend well together? Absolutely do. Discovered this combo years ago with my friend Tommy and um, we were just sold straight away and it's just never failed to impress me in terms of how like massive it sounds and of course we know well i know that it influenced the the vx100 the, the well the vx range of amplifiers from victory amps you know we based it on that kind of combo we tweaked it but that was the, the in a nutshell what we were trying to do and um again when you blend those two channels together it sounds huge in the same way so i, I really like the way they blend i'm less a fan of the blend of the the second channel on the 5150 with the JVM, I don't really like the way it feels. It's just too much gain for me. And with the Tube Screamer on top, you really do need to have some serious noise suppression happening there so that you don't just get tons of fizz and noise. My favorite tone would be the crunch, like I said, bright switch in, gain at seven, and then OD1 gain just underneath halfway. Those two together is where it's at for me. That's what we discovered and that's what we loved the most. It's the articulation of the Marshall with the thickness and the lack of definition of the 5150 Mark I, specifically the Mark I. Those two together is what gives you that really, really brutal tone. So in any case, I think they blend really well together. What do you think? Let me know in the comment section below. Also, not to forget, if anyone can help me with regards to this weird ground hum noise, noise floor situation that I've got going on, is it because I'm using two load boxes, is it anything to do with the load boxes, is it anything to do with the way I'm ringing it up, um, if you've got any ideas please put them in the comment section, help me out here because I'm, I've run out of options and I really want to keep this series going and it makes it a little bit harder to do when I can't just choose the load boxes that I prefer to use in this application. So uh, if you have any advice on how to combat this noise situation please let me know in the comment section. Let me know what which of these amps in combination you would like me to do next. And also, if there are amps that I don't have in my collection that uh, you want to hear blended together, then let me know and I'll see if I can get hold of them. So until next time, I appreciate you watching. Thank you very much for checking it out. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. I will link the relevant things in the description box. But like, subscribe and share. I've been Rabia and I will see you all very soon.